Yeah, thank you, dear friends and viewers. We are back again with our series, the presentation on uh, messages to the young and uh, forming a movement that is going to finish the work of God. And that is what we've been building. But uh, the book Last Day event says that the great issue is at hand and it will weed out everyone that will be weeded. And it says that God is in the business of preparing those who will be sanctified by the truth. And so uh, we are desiring that as the three angels' message does this work, the youths and the children as well will be part of it. Uh, as we know that uh, the loud cry of the three angels' message has already begun. How? It has begun in the revelation of the character of the Son of God, that is Jesus Christ. And that is what we are looking forward into, youths and children being able to uh, be part of this group who are going to, first of all, reveal the character of Christ in their manner of doing anything. And then they will go with power to proclaim the three angels' messages. So God is forming a group, those who first of all must have Christ dwelling in them so that they will reproduce that, the character of Christ to be able to shed forth to the world. And uh, today, having seen tomorrow, yesterday, what is very key for such youths who have that interest, today we, we are going to look at uh, what Satan has for those who are really desiring to be part of this movement. And that is why uh, yesterday we left the quotation in Great Controversy 519, paragraph 3, which says that Satan well knows that all whom he can lead, all, not the children are not left out, the youths are not left out, all whom he can lead to neglect prayer and studying of the word of God will be caught in his attacks. And therefore, yesterday we handled being prayerful and the word of God being key for such a youth. And then, therefore, Satan invents every possible device to engross the mind. And uh, there is nothing as beautiful as to know the devices of Satan so that we will be able to uh, separate ourselves from these snares. And that is what we will look into today. Uh, there are a lot to consider concerning that, but uh, I have tried to limit myself and really come to give us solutions as much as possible, not to dwell so much in these snares and encourage every one of us to be able to uh, be able to be well acquainted with these snares. And so uh, certain years we are marked. We, we read that demonially we uh, imitate the divine character, the lovely character of Jesus Christ. The more closely we are marked by Satan. And how? How is it that Satan is going to gain access uh, into the dear children and to the youths? Uh, who wants to really be part of this movement or who are forming part of this movement because Satan is making his last campaign against the church. And that is the biggest question. How will he gain access to the people of God? And yet the Bible says clearly that those who fear God, the angels of the Lord will be able to encamp round about them and God will deliver them. And so those who want to be Part of this movement, they're clinically uh, checked by the enemy, by Satan, and he wants to destroy them completely. And how will he really gain access to them? That is the question, because God's promise are sure that he will take care of those who uh, are fearing him. That is to keep his word, to flee from sin, and to stand upright in this decayed age. Yeah, so that is what we want to consider in a while and uh, then pray to really ask God to help us be part of this movement. Allow me to pray for strength and uh, be able to share with us. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your name for your goodness. The day has been long, especially for me. I have been down with the, the disease which I have not yet known. I pray, Lord, that all will work for your good, uh, for, for your honor and glory. Uh, give me strength, Lord, to be able to share your message in this time that your name may be glorified. Be the listeners, take care of us. May uh, Help us to have a stable network as you did yesterday. We thank you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so straight away, I'll be able to introduce us to what we are going to share today. The Bible says that uh, as man, as man knows not his time, as the fishes who are caught in the net does not understand, does really not know. So is man caught in an evil net, the book of Ecclesiastes. Men are caught into evil nets. The youths are uh, um, come by the snares of the enemy. Why? Because they do not uh, understand. They do not know and they do not have a knowledge of what the, re the enemy is having before them. But is it, should it be so? They should understand well uh, the times and what is before them, uh, the plans of the enemy to destroy them. Allow me to read the book of uh, Ecclesiastes very fast. I'm a little bit uh, slow today. will bear with me because of my weakness. It says... Uh, Actually, verses chapter 9, verses 12 says, For man also knoweth not his time. The youth doesn't understand their time. Why? And the reason given, uh, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men. The sons of men. Let's take it literally. So are the uh, children and youths, and every other person is taken into an evil net. At what time? In an evil time. So, friends, we've seen before that we are really living in an evil time. And this is where Satan has put it, uh, has placed more efforts to be able to entangle the youth and the children, uh, just as fishes and, uh, and birds who are caught in an evil net. But there's something very interesting. There is something very interesting the wise man in the book of Proverbs says. He says that a prudent man foreseeth evil. A prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself. So we want to develop a group. We are forming part of a group of wise men who understand the times, who are able to discern the evil before them and be able to hide themselves. In the same chapter, it says that a prudent man is someone who is wise at heart. That is chapter 16. Someone who is wise at heart shall be called a prudent man. And so those who are wise in their hearts are going to discern the evils right before them, which are laid secretly. Uh, the Sami says that the enemy has laid nets prevailingly, secretly for him. And so they're able to discern that uh, the, the, the net before them, which is laid secretly, and not only discern, but hide themselves. That is the group that I want to be among. I desire to be wise at heart so that I'm able to discern evil and uh, flee from evil and be able to hide myself uh, and finish the work of God. That is quite interesting. And we know very well yesterday as we were considering, and we saw that it is only the word of God that can be able to make us wise at heart. So those who are ignorant of the word of God, guess what will happen to them if they are youths? They will be fell in the snares of the enemy, as we saw yesterday. And so the word of God is very paramount. It's very necessary for every youth and child, and even the old people. And so allow me to quickly because of time and uh, I'm feeling God is giving me strength to finish this meeting. Uh, share my screen and be able to bring to us what exactly uh, Saturn is doing. 
uh, what exactly Saturn is doing and how we can escape ourselves from these snares. Testimony to the church, 496, paragraph 1. Testimony to the church, 496, paragraph 1. Testimony to the church, if you're there, you can read. Or, or for yourself, of course. Uh, let me check testimony very fast. I think this is what I'll check in the in the in the estate. Testimony to the church. I'm trying to do some settings. The, the presentation is right on the thing I should be tapping for sharing testimony to the church brother sam if you do me a favor then share your screen and uh share testimony to the church volume five volume one for 96 paragraph one uh, we want to consider something there before we get into our document for today for 96 paragraph one Yeah, we want to see actually what Saturn is uh, really, what Saturn really desires to do for his children in these last days, and especially the youth, uh, the youths who are ignorant. The youths who are ignorant. Uh, I don't know whether Sam is there. Okay, if you, if you find you will be able to share. Okay, thank you. Uh, it says, uh, it says, sorry. Testimony volume one, volume one, page uh, 496, paragraph one. Uh, but uh, begin from the beginning. Yeah, address to the youth. We are told that young Sabbath keepers are given to pleasure seeking. I saw that they are not one in 20 who knows what experimental religion is. They are constantly grasping after something to satisfy their desire for change, for amusement. And unless they are undeceived and their sensibilities arose to that uh, arose so that they can say from their heart, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord. They are not worth of him and he will come short of everlasting life. The young generally are in a terrible deception. Deception. This was a prophecy that was seen. Uh, it says that the young are in a terrible deception. And yet they profess godliness. That was something that really struck me. And uh, there's lack of experimental religion amongst our youth. The parents are so comfortable when the youth only goes to church and that is all. Uh, they don't attend Bible studies. They don't have personal devotion. And uh, that is okay with them. They can associate themselves with uh, these groups uh, that are in the church, choir, youth groups, and they do not have a practical religion. And it's not an issue. The young generally are in ter terrible deception, and yet they profess godliness. Their unconsecrated lives, their unconsecrated lives are reproach to the Christian name. So sad. So people view uh, us, and I'm talking to present truth believers, and those who want to really, uh, who are desiring to be part of this movement, uh, it says that uh, it is so shameful that they use the name Christianity. Their unconsecrated lives are a reproach to the Christian name. Their example is a snare to others. They hinder the sinner, for it, for in nearly every respect, they are no better than unbelievers. That is the condition of many youths in the church today. And you can bear with me witness. I am praying to be that youth who will be faithful 
who will have a practical godliness and an experience with Jesus Christ, which uh, cannot bring reproach to the name of God. They have the word of God, but its warnings, admonitions, <laughs> reproofs, and correction are unheeded, as are also the encouragements and promises to be obedient and faithful. God's promises are all on condition of humble obedience. And I want to leave it there and encourage every youth to go finish that uh, uh, that le uh, that address to the youth and uh, see what uh, actually God desires. And uh, this is what is going on. And we want to see how we can have a practical godliness, how we can uh, uh, have a, ha an influence for good in the world of today and see now what the enemy, the avenues, the things that the enemy is using uh, to be able to, to be able to uh, bring youth into such a condition, issues affecting youth. And uh, we today will consider two issues and then, and then tomorrow we'll finalize and then continue with other things. We are told that we've read that Satan well knows that those whom he can lead to neglect prayer and searching of the scripture will be overcome by his attacks and he invents these devices. And some of the devices you can still go study for yourself, look at what engross the mind of your child, your children, your, the youths you have, that keeps them not to be faithful to the word of God. And so these are some of the uh, very common devices and very uh, known to have influence over the little ones and the youth right from their childhood that has made them uh, to be in the condition that they are in. Example are entertainment and recreation. And by the way, okay, media, music, social sexual issues yeah so we 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 have entertainment and recreation that has captured the whole world everywhere we have social media platforms where, where people find recreation in them and several other things we have media we have music and we have social sexual issues now let me begin very fast with uh, entertainment and recreation we are told uh, the different. There is a difference between entertainment and recreation, uh, Christian re recreation and worldly amusement. It is so common with our people that worldly amusement has been termed as recreation. I have seen that even in the groups that we once belonged to, uh, that profess to be godly groups. We used to have a lot of amusement in the name of recreation. And that is one of the agency that Satan has really used to deceive many youths, even within the church, even the, within the professed uh, Christian. And so it says there is a distinction between recreation and a movement, uh, amusement. Recreation, when true to its name, rec uh, recreation tends to strengthen and build up. Recreation tends to strengthen and build up, and the vice versa is true. So the amusement uh, do not build up moral characters in the youth. They do not build up stre uh, physical strength in the youth. They do not build up uh, uh, mental power, and they do not build up even spiritual aspect of the youth. And so, and that is what even in the church they are deceived that that is having a uh, recreation. Calling us aside from our ordinary cares, that is uh, still the definition of recreation. Uh, calling us aside from our ordinary cares and occupation. If I am a farmer, recreation will call me from that ordinary occupation and be able to place me somewhere to do what? It affords refreshment for the mind and body and thus enables us to return with new vigor. So question, if we term maybe even football as recreation does it really refresh our mind and does it enables us to return to new vigor or we get tired and uh weary that we cannot even have time for the word of god and time for any other thing and so 
uh, vigor to the earnest work of life. Amusement, on the other hand, is sought for the sake of pleasure and is often carried to excess. A good example I have given, uh, we are told literally that a good exercise should take uh, 30 minutes or so. It depends uh, with the condition of the person, but a good one should be 30 to 40 minutes. But this amusement, which is termed recreation, uh, is always carried to excess. And then on the other hand, uh, uh, it continues, it absorbs the energies that are required to for useful work. Tell me, if your child goes and play the whole day, what benefit will you uh, will you find from that child, even in doing practical home duties? Definitely not. And so uh, it absorbs the energies, the mind energies that they don't even uh, uh, have the word of God within, with them <clears throat> for useful work. And that proves a hindrance to life's true success. So God is not calling us for a life that will just be uh, happy, what we call happiness and uh, uh, neglect things that should lead us to true success in this life. That is the book, Education 207. There are many things which are right in themselves. And there is also another extreme that is among us, those who profess the present truth. But listen, there are many things which are right in themselves, but which perverted by Satan prove a snare to prove a snare to the unwary. As ordinary, uh, as ordinary conducted, parties of pleasure are hindrance to real growth, either of mind or character. So you cannot expect your child to grow, have a, a good character if they engage in these pleasures and amusement that they term recreation. And so uh, we are told also that uh, frivolous amusement, uh, frivolous associate, associates, habits of extravagance, of pleasure seeking, and too often of dissipation are formed that shape the whole life for evil. So you are our children, our youth, which Saturn knows well should be forming part of the movement that is going to finish the work, are going to be uh, shaped by Saturn to lose eternal life by this so-called amusement, uh, recreation, sorry. In place of such amusement, amusement, parents and teachers can do much to supply diversions, wholesome and life-giving. I say amen to that. We are not going to just deny uh, the youth, or the youth should not only deny themselves the opportunity for recreation, but they can do something which is much better because recreation in itself is not evil, but Saturn has diverted them and it, uh, it has become a snare. And this is to almost everything of the Christian life. Uh, recently, we were being, uh, there was a, an accusation that we don't really watch televisions. I don't believe that. And uh, the question is, what are, what are you watching in that television? And so there are a lot of things that perhaps those who have known the truth I have not also appreciated. Uh, we are told that there are many things that are right in themselves, but which are perverted by Saturn, prove a snare to the unwary. Uh, as ordinarily conducted, parties of pleasure are a hindrance to real growth, either of mind or character. We've handled that. In place of such amusement, this is the duty of parents, this is the duty of a child or youth who do not want to associate themselves with this so-called recreation, which are amusements. They are told that um, in place of such amusement, parents and teachers can do much to supply diversions, wholesome and life-giving. There has been a class of social gathering in parties of pleasure that have been disgraced to our institutions and even the church, very sad. Our institutions today, which are corrupt in their nature, are upholding funds and all these things in the name of recreation. And uh, this shape the children, the youths, uh, not to be forming part, not to be understanding their duty and what they need to do. There has been a, it because Satan is entertained 
No, no, sorry. There has been a class of social gathering in parties of pleasure has been disgraced to our institutions and to the church. They encourage pride of dress, pride of appearance, self-gratification, Hillary and strifling. There is much strifling and jesting, joking, which are not necessary. Even satanic uh, laughters, which are cultivated because of this amusement. And all these are not preparing our children to be part of this movement, final movement. Satan is entertained as and, uh, entertained as an honored guest. So you can tell who sat, sits at the throne and is honored by all these things. And he takes possession of those who patronize their gatherings. Very sad that among the pleasure lovers are many church members. Uh, among the church, uh, among the pleasure lovers are church members. We are told many are eagerly participating in worldly demoralizing amusement, which God's word forbids. Actually, in the old Bible, you cannot tell where there was such amusement, where the, even the children of Israel, uh, when they were still faithful to God, engaged in such. Thus, they, uh, they sever their connection with God and rank themselves with the pleasure lovers of the world. Actually, the, 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 so, the so professed church of today is announcing themselves that they are like the world. And even us, uh, we can still announce ourselves to be like the world when we are the influence that we are exerting to the world is not a good influence to win them for good uh, for the uh, in the sight of Christ uh, or for the harvest. The sins that destroy the antediluvians world, antediluvians and the cities of the plain exist today. And we will also handle uh, uh, social and uh, sexual issues. And so we are told the sin that was seen in those times, uh, they are also seen today. Men loved pleasure. They were pleasure lovers. But with some who profess to be looking for the coming of the Son of God, who are they? Who are they who are professing to be looking forward to the coming of Christ? Not the one. Uh, looking for the coming of Christ. If God should present these sins before, before you, they appear in, uh, uh, before you as they appear in his sight, you will be filled with shame and terror. The theater, the hotbed of immorality. And Satan has really brought that to almost every family, the poor, uh, the rich, and no wonder the, the mark of the enemy, the mark of Satan will be placed even upon the poor because even them, Satan has really worked to make them gain access to these channels which are used to deceive many. And so it says, uh, among the most dangerous resort for, pla uh, for pleasure is the theater. Instead being a school for morality. Listen. So, uh, Theater in itself was not really bad because it was expected to give to be as a school of morality. And uh, but Saran is using it and uh, using it as uh, hotbeds of immorality. So many youths are very immoral today, even the elderly uh, are very immoral because the theater houses, the theater itself has become a hotbed of immorality. And these things, we see them practical. That is the beauty. We see how things like uh, TikTok, Facebook, even the elderly people are not ashamed to be able to, uh, uh, to do nasty things which does not bring honor and glory to God. And the most uh, surprising thing is that these people profess to be Christians. They have the badge of Christianity. We're told vicious habits and sinful uh, propens uh, propensities uh, are strengthened and confirmed by these entertainments. Low songs, lewd gestures, expressions, and attitudes debrave the imagination and debase the morals. Low, song, low songs, lewd gestures, expressions, and attitudes when children are watching uh, soap operas in their homes, 
uh, to parents today is just uh, normal for them to see even uh, people who are hugging carelessly and kissing carelessly and to them they are comfortable because uh, that is what Satan really wants. And uh, uh, for that reason, he, they are building, they are shaping the children, they are shaping the youths to be able to uh, have, uh, to be, do not have power to resist evil, just as men who are firm to principle in the Bible, like Joseph, resist the evil, right from their mind. There is no influence in our land more powerful to poison the imagination, to destroy religious impression. Today, you go to church, children, youths are just on phones. They do not have interest at all with the word of God. Satan has done that. and But they are fooled, they are fooled within the church to join these uh, groups in the church, uh, maybe choir youth, uh, uh, choir youth uh, groups and all these other groups that you know the children will want to associate themselves with. And for the parents, when they associate themselves with such groups, they are Christian of regular standing. And so we have to be cautious because uh, Satan is not impressed, is not uh, actually being uh, uh, feared by, by, by such. The only safe course is to shun the theater. The cycles uh, and uh, every other questionable place of amusement. That is the only safety for us in these days. There are amusements such as dancing, and card playing, chess, chess, uh, chess uh, lotteries, prize fights, liquor, drinking, tobacco using. We must supply sources of pleasure that are pure. Listen to me, parents and even children and uh, youths, we should look for places, we should look for alternatives which provide uh, an environment which will ennoble, uh, uh, which will uh, supply the source of pleasure that are uh, not pure, that will ennoble and uh, elevate our, our system, our mind. Uh -huh. Some of the most popular movements such as football, boxing have become schools of brutality. Parents are very comfortable their children engaging into these activities. And not only that, they also even come to a point of destroying God's law. These things happen even majorly on the Sabbath, and parents are comfortable. Um, they are developing the same characteristics as did the games of ancient Rome. The love of dom domination. So listen to what happens to these youth. The love of domination, pride, mere bruise force, the reckless uh, disregard of life, and exacting upon the youth power to demoralize, uh, demoralize that is uh, appalling. And so this is uh, Satan's work that he's doing. It's uh, your duty, it's my duty to be able to find out uh, what can be substituted for this uh, amusement and so that we can have a right understanding of what recreation is. Our parents are advised. There are several quotations that I did place because there's, there's somewhere I'm targeting. And so we are we should read more and know what exactly God requires of us. He says family outings, uh, these uh, should be an alternative. You can find out your own, which fits your location. You cannot uh, do kayaking when it doesn't favor you, 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 where you are, when it doesn't work with where you are. And so you can do poetry if it favors what you are, where you are, and try to be innovative as parents and even as dear youths to come up with things that uh, can be able to uh, satisfy uh, the place of amusement and uh, and if, uh, we have right recreation. Yeah, so nature, we have beach, parks, rivers, mountains, fields. I have seen people, we even see people going to beach. They take it as an evil thing. So find out if it's an evil thing for you, well and good. Find out what will supply the place of amusement. Because remember, we were told that recreation is uh, having something to do apart from the work that you do. If you are a gospel preacher, you need recreation 
Why? Because you will not preach any time. And the time you are not preaching, uh, the time you are not engaging to that work, Satan may gain access to your mind. Uh, and uh, that is the time that you will see that I can engage in this and that. Uh, but as we develop, maybe perhaps some people may develop to a point that when they are free, they're not uh, tempted to engage into these things. But as the children grows, as the youth grows, uh, such things should be considered. Beach, parks, rivers, mountains, fields, exertions, hiking, biking, cycling, camping, exploring. There are people who do better camping uh, as a way of recreation. Um, exploring, photography, painting, drawing, poetry, diving, snorkeling, kayaking, canoeing, boating. All these are, are perhaps done in a river. Uh, snorkeling, kayaking, canoeing, and boating. Social gatherings. Some, some may just find recreation by uh, maybe family who believes the truth, believes the same way you believe. You come together and have a social gathering. Perhaps even celebrate in a, go in a, go in a godly way, uh, maybe birthdays or uh, come together to plan for missions, outreach, and all these things. Uh, during uh, holidays and all these things. Evangelism, this can be done largely by youths who are mature and even children should not be left out. Visiting the sick, visiting hospitals, information places where um, those who are in jail are taken care of and clothing the naked, door-to-door -door evangelism, feeding the angry, helping those in need, mending the broken heart, uh, engaging the children in doing all these things and the youth. You can do yourself as well. There is some benefit derived from being in the fresh air. You can be tired in your farm. Just take a, a walk and, uh, re, uh, and enjoy the fresh air, which perhaps if you were doing a work like uh, 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 working in the farm, you would have enjoyed. Maybe someone working in the office, you should not work the entire day, the entire time. You should find time to have recreation, to refresh your uh, energies, both physically and uh, mentally, and above all, spiritually. When we are having quiet moments, we can be, we can meditate upon the word of God as it should be. I entrust our youths, our children, being led by parents, to read Testimony to the Church, Volume 1, 514, the chapter, Recreation for Christians so that they will understand that it is so needful, so that our children will not be disparate, our children will not be bored all the times they are in work, all the times they're doing all these things, they can find a replacement of that which is wrong in itself. Then uh, we were to handle also music and media, and uh, we've tried to handle a little bit, and so, uh, as we come to an end, I want to also go through this very fast, which will capture music and media at large. Uh, and that is guarding the avenues of the soul. These are the channels that Saturn uses to be able to enter uh, into us and, and spoil the youth, spoil the children. And it's also the same avenues that God gets entrance into us by what you listen to, by what you see, by what you eat, by what uh, you, 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 you smell, touch, and all this, taste, all these things, uh, Satan have perverted them, but it should not be so. We should lead our children to be carefully guarding the avenues of the soul. Uh, we've seen that the avenues of the soul are the ears, uh, eyes, the five senses, as they call some say it's six as well. All these should be guarded lest Satan should gain victory over us through them. They should be shut to all that which is impure, earthly, satanic, and be constantly opened towards heaven. Amen. So these channels should be open towards heaven. Whatever thing you are uh, touching whatever things you are uh, handling. Bible says this way, handle not, touch not. So uh, even a, a sense of touch, whatever you are holding, it's very key to be able to make you access uh, Satan's, uh, to be caught in Satan's snares. Um, 
It is through these avenues that Saturn gain access. Keep the heart with all diligence for out of it come the issues of life. So uh, these avenues get into the heart. For example, someone can say, "How? what happened when I eat something? When you eat carelessly and you have impure blood and uh, the channel is corrupt, you cannot reason well, your heart will have a problem. And so you cannot be able to discern spiritual things. And so that is why it begins with all these things. Saturn works even by what people eat, what goes through the mouth. For example, drinking alcohol, uh, a, a, a better example, whatever now will be coming out of you uh, is not impure. And not only alcohol, that is an extreme exp uh, 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 example to be able to show us uh, uh, the practicality of this. But even foods, if not rightly um, eaten, they, there is clog of mind and we cannot reason and do any other thing. So all these avenues should be guarded well to protect the youth, the children, right from their uh, a childhood, right from the stomach. Whatever you eat will, def will uh, define the character that the child will come out with when you are uh, pregnant. And so uh, we are told to keep the heart with all diligence. We are told the mind should not be left to wander at random upon every subject that an adversary of soul may suggest. So the mind should be kept with diligence. It should not wander upon every other thing. Wherefore, guard up the lines of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is uh, to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus will be coming, that grace which he brings should find our mind, uh, uh, we have guarded our minds, and uh, we are sober. Even though Satan will try to attack our mind through all these senses, it seems that the most vulnerable, uh, vulnerable are the senses of seeing and hearing. We said we are going to handle music and media. And so the most used by Saturn, I do not despise the other ones. Uh, you can study for yourself. You can see by practically seeing someone drinking alcohol and see what comes out of that man. And so we are told uh, the most vulnerable ones are the senses of seeing, and everyone can bear me witness it's true, and hearing, whatever you hear, is able to transform you. We are constantly bombarded with what we see and hear. How are we only? I want to go very fast. I'm feeling a little bit drained. Genesis 3, 6, and when the woman saw the power of seeing that the, that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eye. Two things. You, yeah, when he saw, he used the eye and saw that the pleasant, the, no, no, the food was pleasant. Not only that, you will be interested that the senses of hearing was also here applied, that the two things that perhaps Saturn used uh, to uh, confuse the woman, media and music. Let me go again to 2 Samuel 11 verse 2. And it came to pass at eventide that David arose from his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And we will study when we are handling social and sexual things, the, the lovely book of uh, Proverbs, how Saturn will bring things which are painted white to our view, when we will not choose to guard what we see and be able to take us to his direction. I uh, rose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. So the mind tells that him that the woman was beautiful. But perhaps if any other person would have looked at the woman would say, uh, uh, the woman is not beautiful so the power was in uh, beholding and so there is power in beholding we see in the two instances that we, we are brought to ruin with what we behold Psalms 34 the psalmist understood and by the way is the one who was uh, confused by the, uh, the, 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 the what she, he behold he says the, sorry this is not the verse I was looking for I'll be able to yeah, it's Psalms 119, verses 37. But here, we are still looking at uh, the power of beholding. We are told, they looked unto him, who? And were lightened. So by looking, they were lightened. The minds were opened, and their faces were not ashamed. And we are told in 
uh, commenting in that verse, but by beholding, we become changed. The character is softened and refined, ennobled. Yeah, so if the if Satan wants to reform our characters, uh, uh, use our characters to his cause, he'll use the power of beholding, just as Christ wants us to behold him, to look unto him so that he will lighten us with this light of glory, and then we'll shed forth that light, and that is how we are going to form part of this movement which will finish the work of God uh, by first revealing the character of God to the world. There will be a growing intelligence in prayer. We are receiving a divine education, and this is illustrated in the life of diligence and zeal. Second Corinthians 3.18. But we all with open faces behold as it in the glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Amen. So uh, I'm being balanced to be able to show us how when we behold the things of Satan, when we behold what Satan presents to us, we are changed to that image. And so it is with God. When we behold the glory of God, we are changed uh, to his image from glory to glory, even as by spirit of the Lord. It is very clear that when we behold something, we are changed to it. We behold evil, we become evil. We behold the beauty of God, we become like him. Turn away my eyes. This is the psalmist. He had a right understanding of the impact that eyes have, beholding. It says, turn away my eyes from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in thy way. So he knew by experience that by beholding vanity, he will be turned to vanity. And so he says, quicken thou me. And you know what quickens us? It is the word of God. The psalmist says, quicken thou me according to thy word. So he says, um, yeah, that is the power of beholding. I believe that we are following and we are keen to see these things that are these avenues, these channels that Satan is using uh, to draw youth to be lost, not to be uh, part of those who are going to be uh uh, to, to, to reveal the glory of God to the world. Hearing music, yeah, but God said, hearing music, that is the senses of hearing. What do your children hear? What does a youth hear on his phone, uh, on his gadgets, uh, whatever place he is? He says, yeah, but God said, you shall not eat of every tree of garden. As God said, even uh, he was surprised and set startled at that seemed to hear the echo of our thoughts. So he gave ear to the echo of the thoughts of Saturn. But the serpent, the serpent continued in a musical voice. Very interesting. So besides the power of beholding, and we know these things always come together. They are like twins. When Saturn is brings beholding, together with seeing, together. And so the youths lazy, no, no, they see, and then they lazy. And that is all with the people today. With such subtle praise of us, uh, surpassing loveliness, and his words were not displeasing. Instead of fleeing from the spot, she lingered wonderingly to hear the serpent speak. Youths who will stand to hear the Saturn echoing in their ears will be transformed to be or to do what Saturn says. And so hearing is very important. Had she been addressed by being like the angels, her fears would have been excited. But she had no thought that the fancying, uh, fascinating serpent could become the median of fallen foes. Israel, uh, Isaiah, sorry, uh, 33 verses 15. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiteth the gain of oppression and shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stopping his ears from hearing of blood and shutted his eyes from seeing evil too. They go hand in hand. So they stops his ears from hearing blood, which is an evil thing, and shutted its eyes from seeing evil. The heart of him that hath understanding, that is Proverbs 15, 14. The heart of him that hath understanding 
seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of foolish feeds on foolish. So when we feed on foolish, guess what will happen? We will talk foolish. The heart of him that understand, uh, uh, hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. So if you hear someone, by the way, there's a lot of jesting, foolishness, uh, satanic laughters and stifling, all these things, they are all foolishness. Guess the reason why? The, what the youths are allowed to feed on. What then should we do as dear children? Allow me to finish there. What do we do? As dear children, as dear youths who want to form part of this movement that will finish the work, what do we do? Colossians tells us 3 verses 1, if then if ye then be risen with Christ Jesus, seek those things which are above. Look unto those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of earth. So the things of this earth, uh, which are brought by different channels, uh, different ways, uh, they cannot make us to be Christians. So if we want to be risen with Christ, we have to set our affections on things above. Uh, Philippians says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is any praise, think of these things. Things which are true, honest, just, pure, love. That is the standard that the Bible puts. The things which are not pure, lovely, and all this should not be part of us. So I really want to stop it there and uh, still will give us a solution for all these things. And uh, may God really help us as dear youths, as dear youths and children and parents to see the necessity of uh, guarding uh, avenues of the soul, of being careful of the snares of the enemy. May God bless you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. I honor you. I praise your name for your goodness. You've allowed me to finish this meeting. Though very weak, I believe that the strength that I got to speak was from you. And I thank you for that. Continue uh, doing the work in me so that we'll finish this uh, series by your own grace. Uh, we, I want to pray in a special way. I want to commit these youths that, uh, to your able hands that they will find it uh, interesting to engage into heavenly things, to set their affections on things above and forget completely the things of this earth. By whatever means, may your name be glorified. Bless all that have joined. Bless those who will be listening later. Bless everyone. And it's night over here. Keep us safe. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.